So one of the things that came up recently was a tool that I used to use a lot and I haven't used in, oh man, I don't even know how long because I've created other scripts and things like that uh, instead. And that is the animated sweep tool. And uh, if you haven't used it, um, it's more of like a modeling tool than an animation tool in my mind. Um, but it's one of those things that can come in handy. So what I'm gonna do is I have a cylinder here and I'm going to create a helix around it. And I want to make sure that it's the, let's see, let's give it like, I don't know, seven something coils. I'm going to move it up in space so it's centered with this guy. And then I'll make it as wide, whoops, as the uh, surface. I'm going to radius down because I'm really just going to pull a curve from this. So bring that width down a little bit. And get rid of these faces so I have a round surface to work with. Cool. Whoops. T. Alright, now I'm going to bring that width down. Alright, so now I have a um, polygon here and I'm going to make it, let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see it, but it really doesn't matter. Oh, actually, it does matter. Look at that. Now i got to bring the width out. I'm going to put that inner edge right along our surface there and then I'm going to convert the inner edge to a curve, modify, convert, blah, 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 blah. Uh, polygons to edges, cool, hide this, and I will delete history on that curve, and I'm just going to make like a little molding piece or something like that that I want to put spiraling up this surface. So I'm going to go to my curve tools, and just because it's easier, I will... Uh, do this. Now duplicate that. There we go. Freeze it. Delete it. Whoops. <laughs> what have I done? Go back to that view. There we go. I'm going to reverse the curve and now I'm going to attach those curves together. And instantly for this, uh, for attach, I have um, con connect on said that weird rather than blend um blend you know it's going to soften that middle piece i actually want to point there just so i can illustrate what i'm doing so put those back hide that okay cool and now what i'm going to do is take this curve and i want to make sure that it's going forward in x in the direction that i'm thinking about so what i'm thinking about doing is this thing's going to go wrapping around that surface so the reason i use x is just because with path animation it just works better um, it's always been one of those little weird things that, who knows, I don't know why, but it works better. I'm going to make it smaller and freeze it again. Don't necessarily have to freeze it, it's just for cleanliness I like doing that. And you know what, I'll call it profile for some more cleanliness. Cool, so now I'm going to select that, select the curve, go to constrain, they move it around, go to motion paths, and I should leave this open because I might have to play with it a little bit to make sure it's doing what I want. Okay, so first thing is, I don't want it to be at the top to start. So let's reverse the spiral curve. Let's try this again. And it's not where I want it to be. I want it to actually be on the side. So let's do that. And again, freeze it. And this is just for cleanliness. I could always move it after the fact, but I want to start off on a good foot. Cool, great. So now I have this thing that's spiraling up that surface. And all I want to do is convert that to a piece of geometry. So there's actually kind of a cool tool um, in Visualize. It used to be somewhere else. I don't remember where. And it's under Create. It's called Create Animated Snapshot. And there's also Create Animated Sweep. So I'm going to go to the Sweep because that's the one that actually builds the surface for you after the fact. So it has the standard um, building options after the fact, like all the other extrudes and things like that and lofts have. I'm going to turn it to time slider because I want to do the whole thing. And I'm just going to hit apply to show you what it does. So it creates this surface now that neatly wraps around, um, you know, based on the movements of that thing. The one thing I want to take a look at, though, is you notice that I have a whole lot more here. I'm going to hide the loft surface for a second. You have a whole lot of more curves at the beginning and a whole lot of curves at the end. And the reason for that is actually because of my animation. If you look at that profile, animation from my motion path, open up the 
graph editor, I have your, you know, your standard spline. So I'm going to convert that to a straight um, curve. And you see it instantly updated my uh, curves now. So they're nice and even going up there. And if I go to that and a uh, snapshot group, there's actually an input called snapshot. And I can change this. So like, let's say I didn't want it every frame. I can go every two frames. It's actually going to put less on there. I'll have a less smooth surface, but it will do that. Um, you know, you can put as many as little as you want. I'm going to leave it on one. You can also change the start and end frames. So if I say go to frame 50 instead, it's only going to go halfway up, or a little more. 60 would be halfway. Um, keep it at 120. But the thing is, when I do those changes, I don't believe... Oh, no, it is. It's changing my surface. Oh, that's cool. So it's a live... It's a live uh, connection and it keeps that going. Hey, that's cool. But for a second ago I did that. I could swear it didn't work. Uh, but ordinarily this would be a pain in the butt. You know, say you're ripping, wrapping, um, you know, something around a sword handle or a hilt or something like that. It's kind of a nice tool to have. And then you still can go in here and, you know, screw with your loft um, items. Whoops. Close that. Wow. I just killed my machine. There we go. Um, you know, you can change the degrees. You know, it's linear, it's cubic. Um, you can reverse it. I think you can, yeah, let's take a look. You can add sections or spans. So it actually puts them in between if you want to, you know, it'll interpolate and put them in there for you. Uh, and then when you're done, you can go into modify, convert nerves to polygons. And for this, I almost always use per span number of isoparms one, per span number of isoparms uh, one for V. Um, per sur I can't remember, one of them doesn't give you the last curve. So, and per spans in 3D is more like a level of detail thing. So I'm gonna leave it on that, hit apply, and I'll hide my original items there. Actually, I'll hide the cylinder as well. And uh, that's not bad. I think that'll do exactly what I want it to do. If I go in here to my um, UVs, editor and you see you even get somewhat nice UVs because uh, it's based on that original lofted surface. You get a lot of them but they, they don't look bad. And if I go in here and say grab you know a curve like that you can see it does exactly what it's supposed to do and then I can continue on modeling it however I normally would. And because you have the history on there one of the things you can also do is if I go back to that snapshot group uh, actually this Oh, this might, let's see if this works. Uh, if I go to snapshot, okay, it doesn't, oh yeah, it does work. I still have all that history on there. Um, so I put this down to like say frame one, or let's go frame two so we have something. Um, I will key that there, and we'll take it to here and say A120, and it'll actually grow that surface along there. Or if we wanted to slide it, we can get to a certain point, let's say. Uh, I'm now going to key my start frame, and let's jump about 30 frames, and then make that frame 30. Jump a couple frames, go 60. I don't have to do it this way, I could just um, you know, adjust it in the graph editor, but just to illustrate what's going on there. Uh, now the thing is that this is a um, you know, procedurally based surface now. So you're going to get some weirdness with um, other operations and things like that. It, you have to treat it as like sort of a dynamic surface. So if you notice, like my faces get kind of screwy there that I had selected. They still, they don't exist in the beginning, right? And then when I get to that, close to that frame, they do exist, but it's not the same faces. And if I get to that frame that I selected them at, there we go. Uh, that's exactly what I selected. But then it's going to keep building. You know, it's changing that topology over time and changing it. So your vertices numbers change, your face numbers change. Uh, so anyway, you can do some interesting effects uh, with that. And if I bring that cylinder back, um, we can even go back into that original curve and let's say scale it out just a wee bit so that we can actually see it. So yeah, so that's just kind of looking at some of the things that... Um, Anyway, you can do with animated sweep, and I uh, hope that helps.